Welcome to Mr. J's uh, Earth and Space Science video tutorial. In this session we're going to further build our understanding of the olivine melt phase diagram and specifically we're going to look at uh, a complete cooling history and how to read the proportions of minerals and liquid that are in the system at any temperature in the cooling history. So we're going to go back to our example of 50% uh, olivine, or sorry, 50% magnesium component and 50% iron component. So that's right in the middle of the diagram. So I'm, here we go again with that problem. I need a new layer. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to put a vertical line up and down in the diagram. And that vertical line represents uh, a 50-50 mix of iron and magnesium. Recall that this is the liquid field. This is the liquid plus solid field. Always got to keep those straight. And then this is the solid field. So at high temperatures, any this composition will consist of a single liquid of that composition. So at high temperatures, say almost 2,000 degrees Celsius, then it's just liquid. As we cool, we go through an interval, a range of temperature from this temperature right here down to this temperature right here that consists of liquids and solids coexisting together that are continually changing their composition until we hit this temperature and, and then any temperature below that we just have solids that are cooling. Okay, so let's look at uh, the mechanics of working out a complete cooling history including the proportions of solids and liquids at any temperature in the cooling history. So right away, uh, one of the things that's very useful to do is to draw the appropriate horizontal and vertical lines that are uh, key. So at this temperature, this represents the temperature of first crystals. And those crystals will have this composition right here. And the liquid has the composition of the system. And as we cool this, at some intermediary temperature, Oh, let's just pick one. Let's take a temperature right here. So this is going to be our starting temperature, T1. This is the same T2 from second temperature from the previous video. This is some temperature lower than T3, but higher than T4. And uh, we'll recall from the last video that T4 is, sorry for that little jump there, T4 is the temperature at which the last liquid is formed. Okay, so now I'm just now we're going to drop vertical lines. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to color the evolution of the liquids magenta. So that's going in this direction here. The liquids evolve to very iron-rich compositions. And for each special liquid, I'm going to drop a vertical line so we can read their compositions. And I'm going to put one just on this side of the green line just to remind us that that's a very special liquid. That's our starting liquid, and that's our final liquid. And let's use the cyan color for the solids. The solids will evolve down the solid composition curve to the composition of the system overall, at which point further cooling will just cool the solids, cool those crystals. And uh, we need to drop uh, vertical lines down to be able to read those special compositions. Okay. And again, I'm going to put a blue line just to the left of the, to remind us that the solid is ending up at the overall composition of the system. Okay, well, T3 is the interesting uh, temperature to look at here. 
because we have a, some kind of mixture of crystals and liquids in some kind of proportion that we need to figure out. What I'd like to do is just to think backwards just a little bit. Um, at this temperature, any temperature cooler and we have 100% solid. So what I want to do is color this line right here uh, for the solids. I'm going to color it that cyan color. So just uh, give me a second, I'm going to make a slightly fatter line here. So we're going to color it the color of solids. So that's a blue color. And let me just make it a little fatter. There we go. Okay, so it's the same color as the composition curve. And I'm going to color this segment up here magenta because at, at this temperature uh, the system is almost 100% liquid. Well, it turns out that uh, this line segment that I'm drawing between the solid composition curve and the liquid composition curve uh, represents the composition of the system overall. So it's almost 100% liquid, uh, liquid here, so hence the color of the liquid. And at this temperature way down here, we're at the temperature of the solids. Okay, well, let's look at this intermediate, temper intermediate temperature and color it, color these line segments the same way. So on this side, we're going to color it magenta, and on the other side, magenta for liquid, and on the other side we're going to color it uh, cyan for the solids. And I'm just going to represent now the composition of the system with this big fat yellow dot because we're losing sight of our special compositions here. Okay. Well this turns out uh, that the length of this line segment right here, or you could read that off of the axis as well. You can use the axis as a ruler, but the length of this line segment divided by the length of the total line segment between the liquid composition and solid composition curve represents the proportion of solids. And this line segment from here to here divided by the total line segment between those two composition curves d uh, defines the proportion of liquid. So we can see at this temperature T3 that the system is still uh, substantially liquid. In fact, just to eyeball this, so I'm going to use now a, a, a red color. If we just divide this, so we take that as one unit, two units, well almost three units. The system is basically 33% solid and 66% liquid. So right here we have 33% solid, 67, oh, did I just write liquid, 33% solid and 67% liquid. So I just need to uh, fix, fix this. So there we go. And that should be solid. So now we know how to read the proportions of solids and liquids and compositions. And that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.